So in this module, we talked about a bunch of logic families, the uh, RTL family, enhancement load, depletion load, pseudo and MOS. They all share a few specific features that make them kind of undesirable. So we want to explore these features in more detail. So if we look at the, uh, at the um, families we looked at, the RTL family looked like this. This is the inverter. The enhancement load family looked like this. The depletion mode family looked like this. And pseudo and MOS looked like this. Now, they all share a few features, and these features can be summarized as follows. V output low was not equal to zero in any of these families. In fact, V output low was a function of the sizes of the transistors, of the load and the driver, more specifically the, um, the ratio of the sizes of the two transistors. Also, in one of the output cases, in this case when we were outputting V output low, the current was not equal to zero. This caused a finite static power dissipation or finite steady state uh, power dissipation because we are drawing a finite uh, steady state current. Also, for all the families, the VTC had a wide transition region. This was caused by a, uh, a moderate slope in the transition region, and this caused the noise margins to be bad. So all of these families suffer from this. And the reason that they do is that when they were producing one of the output values, specifically the output low, they produced it by drawing a large current, allowing this current to leave a voltage drop across a load. So these disadvantages actually have to do not with the kind of load we used, because when we used a passive load, we said this passive load is bad because it, it consumes a lot of area. So let's try to go and find a, an active load. The enhancement load was bad because it caused us to lose a uh, V threshold in V output high. But when we used other loads, we, could st we, we still couldn't achieve V output low equals zero volt. And this is because any family which has a, an architecture where there is a driver and a load is going to suffer from this, these disadvantages. So these disadvantages are uh, intrinsically tied to the fact that we are using a driver load architecture. All of these logic families, any logic family that has this architecture is called a ratioed logic family. And this is because one of the output values is dependent on the ratios of resistances when we draw a current. In fact, it really doesn't matter even if the driver is a PMOS because you can actually de design an inverter that looks like this where you have a PMOS and then you have a load at the bottom and you take the V output at the drain of the PMOS. So we are changing the NMOS and the PMOS now, right? And when you actually, when you use this kind of thing with specific types of loads, you will find that V output low is equal to zero volt. And you know, that's really great. But you will find that V output high now does not equal VDD, and V output high now is a function of KL by KD. And so the architecture itself means that one of the output values is never going to be the ideal output value. Regardless of what kind of transistor you use as a driver, regardless of what kind of thing you use as a load, you will always suffer from these four problems. And the problems, again, have to do with uh, the, the use of a load. Let's recall what distinguishes a load from a driver. What distinguishes a load from a driver is that the driver accepts inputs while the load does not accept inputs. The load is a passive component, even if it's made out of transistors. Now let's ask a more abstract question. We want to use transistors as switches, right? To pass logic zeros and logic ones. And hopefully we, can, we want to achieve outputs where uh, the, uh, the logic output is zero volt or VDD, right? This is our aim, to have zero volt and VDD as V output high and V output low. And this gives us the best noise margins possible. So if you have a switch and the switch 
is supposed to pass a zero volt, you expect it to pass the zero volt in hole. If it's expected to pass a VDD, you expect it to pass a VDD in hole. So let's see if the NMOS and the PMOS will actually do this. So let's imagine that we have a, an NMOS transistor and it's trying to pass a VDD to the other side. And let's assume that the other side has an open circuit on it, right? So let's assume always an open circuit on the other side. And let's assume that the switch is on so that there's a VDD here. Let's also consider the case where the uh, NMOS is trying to pass a zero volt rather than a VDD. Again, there's an open circuit here and it is on. And let's, let's consider the same cases for PMOS. Let's ask ourselves, is the PMOS a superior switch to the NMOS? So let's see if the PMOS manages to pass the VDD and if it manages to pass the zero volt. But recall that for um, the PMOS to work, we have to provide zero volt to the gate. This guarantees that it is working pro uh, properly. And the question becomes, what is Vx in each of these uh, four cases, right? So let's consider this case first with the NMOS trying to pass the VDD from its drain to its source. Now, this is a diode connected transistor because the drain and the gate are at the same potential. We have actually solved this problem repeatedly when we talked about the enhancement load family, but let's, let's solve it again. The saturation current for this NMOS is equal to zero, and it is also equal to K over two into VGS, which is VDD minus VX minus V threshold all square. And so this is equal to zero. And so VX is equal to VDD minus V threshold. So the NMOS did not manage to pass the VDD in whole. It passed it as VDD minus V threshold. Now let's go and look at uh, the NMOS trying to pass zero volt. So the NMOS, in this case, in this situation, this is its source. This is the source, right? Because it's at ground. Nothing is going to be lower than ground. So this is the source. And so VGS here is VDD. This transistor is definitely on. There's no doubt about it. If we assume that this transistor is in saturation, the saturation current is K over 2 into VDD minus V threshold all square. But there is an open circuit here, and so the current cannot be non-zero, which it has to be if the transistor was saturated. So the transistor is actually not saturated, and it is ohmic, and we have Kn into VDD minus V threshold, VDS minus VDS square over 2, equals zero. This is solved by VDS equals zero, which causes Vx to be equal to zero volt. So actually, yes, the NMOS managed to pass the zero volt in whole. And this makes sense. We are, here we are talking about the NMOS in ohmic regime, so it is a resistor. If you create an open circuit on one side and there is a ground on the other, then the ground will be shorted to the other side. It really makes sense. You know, there's no current flowing in this resistance. So let's go look at the PMOS. In the PMOS, with uh, the input, uh, with the gate at zero volt and uh, the source at VDD, and recall that this is the source now because it is the higher potential, and the higher potential for the PMOS is the source, then this transistor is definitely on because VGS is minus VDD. It could be saturated, but the saturation current is Kp over 2, into minus VDD minus V threshold P all square. This cannot be equal to zero, and yet there is an open circuit here. So that the KP, the transistor has to be ohmic, and the current equation is minus VDD minus V threshold P VDS minus VDS square over two equals zero. This is sol solved by VDS equals zero, and so this is solved by VX equals VDD. And so the PMOS actually did manage to pass the VDD in whole. But what happens when the, the, the PMOS tries to pass uh, a zero volt? Now, this is the drain for the PMOS because it is the lower potential, and this is the gate. So this PMOS is diode connected because its drain and gate are at the same potential. So it is saturated. Its saturation current is Kp over 2 into Vgs. The gate is at zero volt, and the source is at Vx minus V threshold P, all square equals zero. This causes Vx to be equal to absolute value V threshold P. 
So this is really important. You know, we reached a, an important result. If we use an NMOS as a switch, the NMOS will pass a zero volt in whole. But if we try to pass a VDD through it, it will eat up a little bit and will give us VDD minus V threshold N. If we use a PMOS as a switch, it will pass a VDD in whole as VDD to the other side. But if we try to pass a zero volt through it, it will eat up a little bit of it and give us a slightly higher voltage of absolute value V threshold P. So if we try to imagine an ideal circuit in which uh, we have an inverter that gives us V output high equals VDD and V output low equals zero volt, there is no way that this network could be made using NMOS only or PMOS only. We will need both kinds of transistors because that's the only way to get full voltage swing at the output node.